to move in this place. Is back in the house. Come on, it's exciting in this place. Let's pray really quick before we open up. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity, God, to walk physically into your house, God, and to give you glory, God. We know we could do it anywhere, anytime, God, but we don't want to forsake, God, this time with each other, God, with you, God, most of all. So come and have your way in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.
Come on, give him a shout. Give him a shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father.
good. Come on. He is good. Come on. He is faithful. Come on. That song is so powerful. He says, even with all your promises that you have given us, in his word of God, his promises are there and it's for every single one of us. He says, that's not it. I'm going to give you all love heaven's secrets. Only three people got that today, but he says, I am not only going to give you that, there is more that you shall receive all of heaven's secrets. Come on, so all those questions that you have in your head, he says, I'll answer them for you. You will know every single secret. Come on, right now is the time for prayer. Come on, stay in that attitude. Woo, God is so good. He's faithful. Come on. We're going to pray for the service right now. We're going to pray for every single one of us right now everybody from the kids in the back to us right now because I don't know about you but the devil was trying today come on he was trying today and I know he was trying on you he was trying to keep you home he was trying to keep you away he was trying to single you out so we're going to pray for you guys we're going to pray for the teachers we're going to pray for our pastors come on if you got the gift of speaking in tongues start speaking in tongues Come on, don't be shy. Now is not a time to be shy. Come on. Stand out and be bold. Come on. Join with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your promises, my Lord. We thank you for what you are doing in this house, my God. I pray right now, my Lord, for every person that is here, my God, that the spirit of, of fear will flee right now in the
the name of Jesus. I could see fear running right now in the name of Jesus, my God. I pray right now, my Lord, that you will soften our hearts, my Lord, so we may receive your word. There is a word that's going to come forth that is going to bring change and transformation in our hearts, my God. Renewing of the mind in the name of Jesus. A new heart you are giving us, my God. So I pray, my Lord, as the word goes forth, we may catch it, my God. We may catch it, my God. So I pray, my Lord, that we just have our hands up ready to receive your word, my God. I pray that you anoint the speaker tonight, my Lord, for your word is already anointed, my God. And I pray, my Lord, that you will open up spiritual ears so we may hear your word. But God, right now, my Lord, I pray for fire from up in heaven coming down to this earth, my God. I pray that there will be a shout of praise coming from this service, my Lord. And I pray right now, my Lord, that we will feel so comfortable to just stay still and do nothing, my Lord. Because that's not what you call it. You didn't call us to be the do-nothing Christians, my Lord. You called us to glorify you in every single way, my Lord. So I pray for our pastors, an anointing, a covering over them, my Lord. Give them wisdom, my Lord, as they guide this flock, my Lord. I pray for the leadership, for wisdom, my Lord, in everything that we do, my Lord, in everything that they do, my God. I pray for the congregation, my Lord, that we would all be from the, from the very top all the way down to the last servant, my God. One accord, according to your will, my God. That's what you called us for, Lord. In Jesus' name, come on, all the saints say, amen and amen and amen. Woo, welcome powerhouse. Come on. Man, I hope some, somebody's awake today. Somebody's alive tonight. We can make, we can get to our seats. You guys can give each other the, the, uh, the George Lopez. You know what I mean? Y'all can do that with each other. Give us a little wave, hello. Welcome everybody that's online, amen. Maybe you're sitting down and you're thinking, what is Joe still doing up there? Well, I'm up here for announcements, tithes, and offering, but first, I'm going to hop into um, announcements, amen? Y'all ready? Is anybody excited to be here? Man, I'm telling you, the devil was trying today. He was trying, he was, man, this guy pulled a, a double shift on me today. I don't know about you guys, but we made it. We're here. We're here to be refreshed. We're here to be renewed. Come on, so we may take that word and take it from uh, the next day, the day after that, the day after that. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Come on, if you're, if you're here right now, come on, someone say, come on back. Come on, you got to, this guy. Come on back. Amen. Why do I say that? I say that because uh, we have Bible studies tomorrow and we have Bible studies on Friday. Amen? Yeah. If, you're not, if you're not in a Bible study, join a Bible study. Come on. We want you to get plugged in. I told the fellas this on Monday night. We want you to get plugged in. We want you to grow. We want to see you do greater things for the kingdom of God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. First and foremost, aside, aside from that, I want you to know, especially everybody online, we have taken extra safety precautions. I know you guys seen the video that took place. We're, we're fogging. We're getting everything sanitized for the safety of the congregation. Amen? Yeah. For your safety, we're doing everything that we can to make sure all of us are safe. Amen? Come on. Again, if you didn't see that video, go on Facebook, Powerhouse, uh, OC, go, go on the Instagram or Facebook, and you can see the post and check it out. You can see what's getting done, what it is. If you, want, if you have any questions of what type of solution it is, you can ask Ernie. <laughs> Ernie got all the info. Amen? Uh, all right. Next, 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 next. Come on. I, I feel like... We just quiet today. Come on. All right. Next, next announcement. Is, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on time. Someone say, someone say, come on back. Come on back. We have youth is on back. Come on now. Youth night, Wednesday night, it's back. It's for your child. Come on. I know sometimes we look at our kids like, man, y'all need Jesus. You know what I mean? Obey your parent. Amen? Nobody's ever told them that? I know I do. I tell my kid that all the time, bro. But youth Coming back on Wednesday night, it starts tonight. Starts tonight. Amen. An encouragement. Bring your youth. Bring, bring your neighbor's youth. Bring your neighbor's neighbor's youth. We want them to learn and grow in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Someone say, come on back. Come on. Service is on Sunday. This Sunday coming up, special service going on. Why is it special? Because Jesus is going to be there. That's why it's special. But we have something going on that Sunday. 
That Sunday, we have something amazing going on. It's called prayer at 9 a.m. Woo! Don't miss out. Don't miss out. If you miss out, you missed out. Don't miss out. God is good. And he shows up right there in the prayer. Amen? Service starts at 10 a.m. Invite somebody. Bring someone out. Drag them with you. Don't kidnap them. Just bring them with you. You know what I mean? Come on back. Amen? Someone say, come on back. My wife don't seem too happy when I say that. Just play. Next Friday, we have something good going on. Come on. Some good going on next Friday. So that means that next Wednesday, we will not be having service. Next Wednesday, no service. Why? Because that Friday, we are going to have Evangelist Jose Vargas and Angela Vargas come out and give a word. That Friday and that Sunday, so invite somebody out. Invite them out. But you know what's even, what's, what's more amazing in that situation that they're coming out? Is that we have Jesus. <laughs> come on. Come out. Listen to the word. Hear the word. Grow in the word. And keep pushing. Amen? Someone say, come. I'm just kidding with y'all. I'm just playing. All right, I'm going to hop into tithes and offerings. You guys ready for tithes and offerings? You guys just want to hear the preaching. I'm going to stay up here as much as I can. Just kidding. So this, this, this ties an offering message that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off of. Um, Evangelist David went off this, and I thought it was just an amazing, uh, amazing, uh, a, a really good offering message. I'm not going to make it any better. I pretty much copied what he was saying. Amen? But the reason why is because I really hope everybody understands and sees what it's saying. Right? And, and, and it's, about, it's about faith. Yes, it's an offering message, but it's also about faith. Amen? But before we go in, if you want to text to give, 714 710 one nine eight one, and if you want an envelope, you can raise your hand. One of the greeters, or um, oh, greeters, you're good. Sorry, she'll give it to you. And if you want to sign up to be a greeter, there's a paper in the back you can sign up. Come on, get plugged in. Someone say, come on back. All right, ties and offering. James two seventeen says this. Thus also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Faith without works is dead. We all know that scripture, right? A lot of us know that scripture. Faith without works is dead. But if you go down, you will see that that Abraham, our our father justified by works when he offered offered Isaac, his son, to his altar, right? Faith without works is dead. He had a faith that God was going to supply every single need. But God said, offer your son Isaac. So, right? My son? I'm going to offer my son? Yes, offer your son. All right, God, I'm going to go by faith. I'm going to give you what is yours, what you gave to me. I know some people are like, that's some Old Testament stuff. It is. Amen? Do you see the faith that was working together with his works? His faith and his works were working together hand in hand. Um, And his works and faith, since it was working together, it was made perfect because of God. Amen? Amen? And in James 1.22, it says this, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving yourself. Don't deceive yourself. Be, be doers, not just hearers of the word of God. Amen? I was actually listening to an offering this message, and he says that, that, that there are a whole lot of scriptures about giving. Right? People say that offering and tithing isn't inside the New Testament. That's a lie. That's not true. There is. Jesus talked about it the most. Amen? So we see that faith is activated by action with, with Abraham, right? With giving him son, giving his son, it's activated by it's, it's activated with action. Um, it is like faith and your works is like turning on a light. The light's there. You just got to hit that switch to turn it on. The faith is there. You just got to flip on the switch with your actions. Amen. Because if you never flip that switch, that is ne- that light will never turn on. So my point is, faith without works is dead. We can believe all we want that this light's going to turn on, but if you never flip the switch, you'll never turn on. So just like what you're giving, right? You're giving, you want to give to the Lord, and we're believing for an increase of, 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 of your finances. We're be- believing for a, a promotion, right? We're believing for it. We want it. We desire it. We've been praying, but we haven't been doing any works. We've been having faith that we're going to get promoted, but we have never started doing the works, which is tithing and offerings. So I hope tonight will be the night that you start. 
You start that, 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 that works process because our faith is there. Come on. Some of us want to win the, 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 the jackpot, right? Come on. The lottery. I'm just not going to go there. Amen. So faith without works is dead. You have, you, Abraham would never have had God supply his offering, which is the ram, if he never walked to the mountain and was going to give his son up. Come on. He had to get his son and be like, come on, boy. Come on. We're going to, God's telling me to do some. Um, Isaac's like, all right, cool, Papa. And they go. And he's about to give up his son. But God says, no, here's a ram stuck in a tree. Here's your offering. Your faith that I was going to supply your every need and your works of bringing your son up this mountain was made perfect by the ram that I'm going to give to you. Come on, so anybody want their light turned on? It's time for you to flip the switch today. Come on. Amen? We're going to pray over the offering. Um, Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for for what you are doing in this house, my Lord. I pray, my Lord, that tonight will be the night that we flip on that switch, my Lord, and have faith that that the lights are going to turn on, my God. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for increase my lord and i pray my lord that faith and works will come together and be a perfect gift for your kingdom in jesus name amen and where the spirit of the lord is there is Hallelujah. It is awfully quiet up in here tonight. Praise the Lord. Somebody give Jesus a shout of praise tonight. Thank you for coming out. Powerhouse Church, it's so good to see you. Thank you for joining online. Wasn't that worship just amazing and awesome? It was. Hallelujah. You just got to tap in tonight. You just got to be ready for what God wants to do. I believe that God has a word for us tonight, us, not you, not me, but us. I believe for every one of us tonight, he has a word. And those watching online, I believe he has a word. So are you ready for it tonight? Got to be ready. Amen. We got to be ready. So I just thought that, um, that it was really, really interesting as I get situated It was really interesting that we opened up on Sunday back to church. Amen. For those of you that were here, those of you that were watching online, we opened the doors on Sunday. And it was, you know, um, it was exciting. It was a little bit nervous, right? We've been closed for so long. Now it's there. There's a new norm. It's a new day, it's a new time, it's a new season, right? There's a new norm. Things look a little bit different than they used to. But we're still serving and praising the same Jesus. There's some things that don't change, and that is our worship, that is our praise, and that is the giving of the word. As the word goes forth, we are transformed by his word. You know, and, and what, I, what I thought was really interesting, why I thought it was interesting, because of those of you that follow the Jewish calendar, how many of you do? You'll know that, nobody, hallelujah, (laughs) you'll know that it was Rosh Hashanah. I don't even want to, I probably said it wrong. Forgive me, Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah. That was, um, that was the weekend. It started, I believe, on Friday night. And in the Jewish calendar, it signifies that we're going into a new year. Did you hear that? 
We, and it's a three-day celebration of blowing the shofar. How many of you know what a shofar is? It's a ram's horn, right? We're going into a new season. We're going into a new thing. God is about to do a new thing. And it's a time of prayer and consecration. It's a time of praying a blessing for peace throughout the year. So if I'm saying that to say that we open in a critical time, it was prophetic and we didn't even know it. Isn't God good? Some things are so prophetic and it goes over our head. But that didn't. That stood out to me. God was showing me that we open. It's a new year. You know, you don't have to wait for 2020 to be over. Because I'm so over 2020. I don't know about you. I'm ready to move on. But we don't have to wait until 2021 to come. It's a new year in the Jewish calendar. It's a new day. I hope that excites somebody tonight. I didn't want to scream tonight. I wanted to just preach dignified. But I can't. Because there's just such a stirring and an excitement in me. And when I dig into the word, oh my gosh, I'm just going to go there. Are you ready? We're going to read Song of Songs or Song of Solomon tonight. We're going to read chapter 2, 10 through 15. I'm going to read in the Passion Translation the title of tonight's message. For those of you that like titles, it is Little Foxes. Amen? Are you ready tonight? Song of Solomon or Song of Songs in the Passion Translation, chapter 2, verses 10 through 15. Follow along. It says, Arise, my dearest. Hurry, my darling. Come away with me. I have come as you have asked. Anybody been asking for Jesus to come? To draw you to my heart and to lead you out. For now is the time, my beautiful one. The season has changed. It's a new year, somebody. The bondage of your barren winter has ended. I don't know about you that have been barren, but the barren winter has ended. And the season of hiding is over and gone. Hello, we were shut up in our homes. Come on. We were quarantined. We were shut up in our homes, not able to assemble, not able to come to the house of the Lord when the Lord says, do not forsake the gathering of the saints. And we were shut up. And he said, the time of hiding is over and gone. Oh, I I hope somebody's getting this tonight. The rains have soaked the earth and left it bright with blossoming flowers. You know, the rain speaks of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The season for singing and pruning the vines have arrived. I hear the cooing of doves in our land, filling the air with songs to awaken you. Doves here, it says this is the turtle dove, which is heard only at the time of harvest. What is God saying? I'm awakening you because there's a new harvest in your midst. You got to get this tonight. You got to awake. Come on, tell your neighbor, wake up. It's time to awaken. God is trying to get our attention. He's trying to wake us up. He's blowing the shofar. Are you ready? He's calling his saints forward tonight. Come on, somebody. To guide you forth. Can you discern this new day of destiny breaking forth all around you? The early signs of my purposes and plans are bursting forth. The budding vines of new life are now blooming everywhere. The fragrance of their flowers whispers. There is change in the air. Tell your neighbor there's change in the air. Arise, my love, my beautiful companion, and run with me to a higher place. For now is the time to arise and come away with me, for you are my dove, hidden in the split open rock. It was I who took you and hid you up high in the secret stairway of the sky. Let me see your radiant face and hear your sweet voice. How beautiful your eyes of worship. How lovely your voice in prayer. Verse 15, you must catch the troubling foxes. 
those sly little foxes that hinder our relationship. For they raid our budding vineyard of love to ruin what I planted within you. Will you catch them and remove them for me? We will do it together. Thus saith the Lord. Let's pray. Father, I thank you tonight, God. I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you for this season. I thank you for calling us forth out of hiding into a place tonight where we can blossom and bloom, Father, for the harvest is definitely ripe. You are awakening your church to a dawn of a new day, doing something new, Father, in the atmosphere, God. I pray a stirring within each and every one that is hearing tonight, not only those tonight in this place, but those that are watching online. I pray, God, that you are going to break every chain, break every bondage, break every old mindset, mentality. It is broken. The la- the past is gone. It is a race and there is a dawning of a new day. Father, you are pouring out your Holy Spirit. Father, and I pray that you would consume us tonight with your Holy Spirit. Let your word come alive. Let it breathe. Let it speak. Let it transform. Let it touch our mind, body, heart, and soul tonight that we would not leave this place the same way, dry up but we will leave refreshed God knowing that we've been and met with you our wonderful maker and creator we give you all the praise glory and honor and somebody say amen and amen hallelujah did you just start the clock praise the Lord good job guys just kidding okay so I just want to say that you know I ministered this message little foxes years ago and it was for a, a woman's discipleship And um, at that time, I remember that I was praying and seeking the Lord. You know, there's something that we can pray and we can get a message and we can get a word. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We can preach a message 20 years ago and it's really relevant then. And 20 years now, it's still relevant. It still speaks, right? And so I was praying and this was the, the message that he gave me. This is a prophetic word, you guys. This is a prophetic word for today day, for now, for you, for I, for us, the body of Christ. If you heard this message, I I pray that you would go on and read this whole story because this book, because it's not very long. I promise you, you won't be disappointed when you read this Song of Songs, Song of Solomon's. Read it. I wanted to just come and just read you tonight, read to you. I wanted to read the whole thing because there's so much good nuggets in there, but I can't because of time. Praise the Lord. Okay, so I believe that, um, I, I don't know about you, but it just ministered to me. Reading this, going over this again, it just really, really ministered to me because like he said, it's a new day. It's a new year. Like pastor ministered on Sunday. Are you ready though? Are you ready for what God's about to do? Because we can't go into the new thing holding on to the old. Nobody looking or turning their back on the plow, right, is fit for the kingdom. Meaning we can't keep turning around looking at what happened yesterday. Today is a new day. And tomorrow will be a new day for you and I to get back up, for you and I to get back into the word, to get back excited, to get back into our worship, to get back into prayer. Tomorrow is a new day and tonight is a new night. It will never, ever happen again. Somebody needs to get this tonight. But here, you know, as I was studying and reading this, the Lord really, when I was praying for that, that, um, that um, discipleship, the Lord said, I was praying all week and didn't have anything. And finally on Friday, I was praying and walking back and forth in my living room and the Lord said, it's the little foxes that spoil the vines. Just like that, clear. It's the little foxes that spoil the vines. And I'm like, oh, wow. That's true. It's the little foxes that spoil the vines. And I didn't even know back then, years ago, I didn't even know where that scripture was. 
It was just plain as day, that scripture. And, my, and I kept saying it over and over. It's the little foxes that spoil the vines. And my husband comes home, and I'm like, you know, it's the little foxes that spoil the vines. And we had a preacher come. That, I'm, I'm no lie. He came on Sunday, and it was Rudy Machaca. I love Pastor Rudy. And he was ministering a powerful message. And it, right in the middle of his message, he goes, you know, it's the little foxes that spoil the vines. So I knew that it was confirmation, but I didn't even know where that scripture was. I had to go and research it. Lo and behold it's in the song of song the song of Solomon and to me that just tripped me out because it was almost like it didn't even belong there the Lord is giving us all this revelation he's giving us all these beautiful things my my beautiful one my lovely dove come and feast with me on my garden of delight and then he says all of a sudden you must catch those troubling foxes like out of the blue like squirrel you know what I mean it was like why is this verse there so I had to research it You know, the the NIV, it reads it like this. It says, catch us, the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. You know, if you ever read Song of Song or Song of Solomon, it's a romance novel, right? A lot of people use it for marriage counseling, right? Um, It's a good one. But it's about two people who are just love sick for one another. But it's not just based on marriage. If you only think that it's for a a husband and a wife, you're mistaken. It is a beautiful portrayal of how Christ is with his bride, with his church, right? Anybody in here loves sick for Jesus? Ooh, wow. When you're love sick for Jesus, it shows, amen. Just saying. It's not just a romance novel, but it's a relationship between Christ and his church. And so we read this book and we could see that it's like a portrayal. It's like our love is, is um, likened to a beautiful garden. In fact, Jesus says in John 15 that he is the vine, we are the branches, and if we abide in him, we will bear much fruit, right? But in the midst of this lovely picture, beautiful garden, we're warned to catch the foxes that would try to destroy our blissful garden. You must catch, and he says, the troubling foxes, the sly little foxes that hinder our relationship. So I really had to research what foxes do and and, and what they're about. Because in my mind, I could just picture a fox, and I know what what the fox says, right? What does the fox say? We know the song. But I didn't know, and come on, come back, come back. Don't think about the song. I lost you already. But I didn't know other than that. Honestly, I didn't know anything about a fox. So in my research, I found out that foxes will ruin a garden by digging for food, hence destroying somebody's beautiful garden. They can smell food a mile away, and they come and they dig it up, and they ruin the fruit growing in someone's garden. Get this. Catch this part. The foxes catch the new grapes the most tender spot on the vine. They try to devour the bunches of immature grapes. Let that sink in for a minute. I had so much revelation when I read that. Because isn't that just like the enemy? He can't stand to see you fruitful. He can't stand it. When you're going to church, you're faithful, you're on fire, you're passionate for God, all your fruits are showing, you are not only preaching the word, but you're walking the word in power, in might and authority. The enemy can smell your fruit a mile away. And he comes And he tries to devour our beautiful garden and our growing and our fruitfulness. You know, I want to help us tonight. I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching to us. Because I really needed to get this tonight, and I hope that you get it too. You know, and we already know how Jesus feels about the fruitless trees, right? You can go ahead and read the story of the fig tree on your own time. So what happens tonight? What am I trying to say? The church is growing. The church is producing much fruit. 
people are rising up in ministry. They are excited. We are blossoming. Souls are coming into the kingdom. Lives are being touched, healed, transformed, and delivered. We are coming and having a Holy Ghost revival. God, We're seeing God move. We're seeing God fill every heart, life, and soul. We're seeing a powerful move, and we're seeing God bring in souls. Those that were once broken, he's healing them. Those that were once bound, their chains are being loose, and the chains are coming off. Addictions are being broken. Mindsets are being renewed by the power of God. We're seeing a great move. Revival is happening, right? And what happens? What happens? The dry bones are rattling. And then the little foxes come in. And they try to destroy the crop. Listen, it's the little things that often spoil the big important things. It's the little things. It's not the big things. So what do I mean? It could be a disagreement, a little disagreement with a couple of brothers or sisters. It could be a little gossip or misunderstanding. It could be a little he said, she said telephone game. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? You get the picture? One thing that proves that all is going well, the little foxes come in. That's how we know we're on the right track because the little foxes come in. You see, the devil don't care if you go to church and occupy a seat. He don't care if you're faithful on Wednesday and Sunday, but you're quiet throughout the rest of the week doing your own thing. He don't care about the lukewarm Christian. He's good with you coming. He's good with you sitting there. He's good with you making the seat warm. What matters to him is when you start to rise up. When you start to say, you know what, I'm going to go a little bit deeper. God's calling me this year to go a little bit deeper. I'm going to start praying a little bit more. I'm going to start reading my word a little bit more. And boom, he smells it and he comes in. You know, the little foxes can be like jealousy. Let's be real tonight. Envy, lying, complaining, criticizing. You know, on a side note, I just read this the other day on Facebook, and it was the total truth. It says, you can't receive from the people you are criticizing. And I'm just going to leave that right there. The bottom line, it's the tricks of the enemy to hinder our growth. And you know who pays the price for it? Oh, we pay the price in little ways, right? We pay the price because it ruins our relationship in little ways. But it's not the brother, the, the one that pays the big price. It's not the brother or the sister that's been saved for many, many years. That's been coming to church. That is already engrafted in the church and knows that this is the church that they belong to. The brother and the sister that's mature in Christ. That's been saved for years and years and years. That's not the one who pays the price. You know who pays the price? It's the new convert. It's the new member. It's the one that comes in and is looking for a place to call home. That's the one that pays the price. Why? Because the foxes go after the new grapes, the immature grapes. And why does it affect them? Because they come in wanting to see the real deal, wanting to see something than the world and when they come in they see us not getting along us gossiping us complaining us giving each other looks us not wanting to sit next to each other so it's not it doesn't affect us it affects the crop the harvest that God is trying to send us that's who the little foxes really mess with I'll calm down you know, the one that's still trying to decide, is this the right church for me? The truth is that there are people, hold on. Because I swear they get me with some crazy pictures. I know I'm like all over the mic too, so it's my fault. But the truth is there are people 
sinners walking into churches, and they want something real, you guys. They want to see the real deal. They can see at work that there's Christians everywhere in their workplace, but they're still acting like one of them. They want to go to a place that's genuine, that's real, that a people are on fire, a people are excited, a people are embracing them, a people are getting out of their cliques long enough to go and talk with them and embrace them and show them the love of Jesus. They're looking for something that's real. They're coming in broken, lost, hopeless, and we're over here with our own little issues. Can we all just get along? It'd be a great thing, right? I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching to us, the church. Someone's ministry ministry starts to grow, and instead of celebrating, we get all bitter and jelly. Someone starts to build new relationships and friendships, and woo, the claws come out because that's my friend. Someone gets blessed financially with a new car, maybe an outfit or a home. They buy a home, and we can't even congratulate because we're trying to keep up with the Joneses, spending money that we don't have just to make a statement. And we're, the truth is we're full of covetousness. You know what that is? It's a, it means greedy or a strong desire to have what is someone else's. We're looking at somebody else's spouse. If I only had them, I'd be flourishing. We got our eyes on everybody else's stuff. Instead of being blessed with the stuff that God has given us tonight. I love you guys. We can't even rejoice when someone gets promoted or gets a new haircut because we're just not happy with with where we're at in this season. It's just the truth, you guys. But the Bible says in Philippians 2, 12 through 15, in the, in the New King James Version, I'm going to read it. Philippians 2, 12 through 15, it says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence only, but now how much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Verse 14, do all things. Somebody say all things. Without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Woo, altar call. (laughs) You know, (laughs) the consequences of complaining is that you leave a bad taste in somebody else's mouth because of your vomiting or venting. It causes division, bottom line. You know, and it takes two to dispute, right? We can't dispute with if nobody's there, if, nobody, if the person walks away. We can't argue with somebody that's not listening or somebody that takes the high road. It takes two to dispute. And the thing is, is that we can't change people. We can only change ourselves and how we handle the situation. Because the Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Spouses, quit trying to look at your spouse. Do what God has called you to do. Amen. That wasn't in my notes. Matthew 12, 25 in the Passion Translation. Because let me tell you, it's been a hard season. Hello, somebody. I know I'm not the only one. You ain't lying. Matthew 12, 25 in the Passion, it says, Any kingdom that fights against itself will end up in ruins. And any family or community splintered by strife will fall apart. So the bottom line, what am I trying to say is that these little foxes cause division and a house divided against itself will fall. 
So the truth tonight is we can't get into the new thing with all these little foxes roaming around. We can't get into the new harvest and take that harvest and take that that by force, take back what the enemy has tried to kill, steal, and destroy if we don't let go of the old, the old mindsets, mentalities, and attitudes. Tell your neighbor the new has come. Tell your neighbor, let it go. Tell somebody else, forgive. We need to work together. Why? Because there's a great harvest awaiting. And the fact is, is we are better together. Why? Because we are the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 17 17 through 20, excuse me. The Passion Translation, again, I love some passion. It says, um, 1 Corinthians 12, 17 through 20, it says, think of it this way. If the whole body were just an eyeball, how weird would that be? How could it hear sounds? If the whole body were just an ear, how could it smell different fragrances? But God has carefully designed each member and placed it in the body to function as he desires. Somebody say, as he desires. A diversity is required. Hello. For if the body consisted of one single part, there wouldn't be a body at all. So now we see that there are many differing parts and functions, but one body. God put us together tonight, saints, because he knew that we would need each other. Where one person lacks in this one area, maybe they're weak in this area, another person is strong in that area. So it works out for all of us when we work together, when we have one mind, one heart, when we're in one accord, it works for the betterance of God's kingdom. Because together we are a powerful force that nothing can come in and penetrate but see he placed us together so that we would would not compete but so that we would complete one another I hope I got that out right Instead, um, the only way to break that ugly comparison trap is to embrace who we are instead of who we are not. Tell somebody, be yourself. Because God made you special and unique, and he needs you for his kingdom. Stay in your lane. Stop trying to get in somebody else's lane when God is calling you forward. God is calling you to pray. God is calling you to humble yourself. God is calling you to turn the other cheek. Don't worry about what sister or brother are doing. You do what God has called you to do, and you will see a great revival in your heart and in your land, in your home, in your children. Hallelujah. Philippians 2, 1 through 5. It's quiet. Hallelujah. Philippians 2, 1 through 5, it says, look at how much encouragement you found in your relationship with the anointed one. Hallelujah. You are filled to overflowing with his comforting love. You have experienced a deepening friendship with the Holy Spirit and have felt his tender affection and mercy. So I'm asking you, my friends, That you be joined together in perfect unity with one heart, one passion, and united in one love. Walk together with one harmonious purpose, and you will fill my heart with unbounded joy. Be free from pride-filled opinions, for they will only harm your cherished unity. Don't allow self-promotion to hide in your hearts. But in authentic humility, put others first and view others as more important than yourselves. Abandon every display of selfishness. Possess a greater concern for what matters to others instead of your own interests. And consider the example that Jesus, the anointed one, has set before us. Let this mindset become your motivation. Wow, we just summed it right there. We just summed it all up right there, church. 
And a lot of us were like, la, 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 because we don't want to hear the truth. Amen. He says, fulfill my joy by being like-minded. So tonight, if you're the one that likes points, here they are. How do we guard our hearts against the foxes? Number one, we pray for one another. Number two, we put others before ourselves. Number three, we be free from pride-filled opinions. My gosh, we all got an opinion, right? Number four, be selfless. And number five, we serve like Jesus serves. Just like, again, I'm going back to the message on Sunday. If you didn't hear it, go back and listen to it. That was a powerful um, revelation. Jesus came to serve. He served while he was here on earth. And then after he was crucified, nailed to a cross, and on the third day, he rose again with resurrection power, seated on the high place with God, the right hand of the Father. He came back and he still served. That was, whoo, mind-blowing. You know, I'm, I'm going to get it down. I know, baby. I'm coming down to a close. You know, I had a little car, my little black Honda Civic, years ago. I love my little vehicle. It was my first car ever. And so it was peeling. It was a mess. But I, my family kept telling me, get rid of it, get a new car. But I wouldn't. It was my baby, my first very car that I bought, my money, my job to pay the bills and take care of it. So I, I had it for years, right? And one day I was driving And the little check um, engine light came on. So everybody knows that, right? Well, to me, the little check engine light went on, but I ignored it. I thought, my car is fine. It's probably just a glitch. It's an old car. It sounded good. It still ran good. I didn't hear any weird noises. So I kept driving it. I knew that the the light was on. I knew that it was there, but I ignored it. And I drove it day after day, week after week. And then a couple of months down the road, it was um, a very rainy afternoon. I had to go pick up my son from school and 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 my daughter too. And I was on my way and put, put, put. Put the car decides to die. You foul devil. I happened just in time before it completely died. I happened to drive into the center divider where I was okay. Mind you, it was cold, it was rainy, I didn't want to deal with it, and I wanted to blame it on the devil. And I couldn't blame it on the devil because that check engine light had been on for weeks and weeks and weeks and I ignored it. You know, in messages like this, God is pricking our hearts. Why am I bringing up that story? Because God is pricking our hearts and the check heart light goes on. And maybe it's been on. Because we're hearing message after message. We're going to Bible study and and they're talking about honor. And they're talking about unity. And they're talking about discipleship. And they're talking about laying your life down. It's talking about being selfless. And the little check heart light is on, but we ignore it. When we should take care of it right then and there. If I would have took care of my car right then and there, I would not have been in that predicament. Luckily, I had a cell phone, and I was able to call friends that would help me literally push the car into a parking lot, and it was a big mess. My car was really messed up, and I didn't pay attention. Spending lots of money on something that I could have taken care of. Do you catch my drift tonight? The check heart light is on and we don't pay it any mind because we think it's just a little thing. I'm fine. I'm going to church. It's not like I'm a drug addict. 
It's not like I'm bound and having an affair or I'm, I'm, I'm alcoholic or something. I'm good. But the check heart light is on and we keep ignoring it and ignoring it because we think some sins are bigger than others. But sin is sin. There is no white lie, little lie, black lie. It's a lie. But we don't want to deal with it. And so what ends up happening is that all of a sudden we lose it because we didn't take care of it when God was telling us take care of this. There's something going on here. He's trying to warn us, but we ignore the warning. It's happened to me, friend. That's why I'm telling you this story. So we daily have to guard our heart. At the end of the day, the Lord isn't going to be impressed by how much you and I fasted by how much you and I read our word, by how much we pray, by how wildly we dance, by how loudly we sing, by how loudly we preach. Hallelujah. He's not going to be impressed by that. What he is concerned with with, is with the condition of our heart and how we treat one another because that really shows the condition of our heart. Compromise is easy, but character takes work. Matthew 5a, I'm coming down to a close. Matthew 5a, it says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I don't know about you, but I want to see God. Don't you want to see God every day? move in every service. I don't want it to be just a Wednesday service, just a Sunday service. I don't want to have to wait till we have a big revival or some big name come to preach. We should be having revival every single service. Every time we come together, whether it be a men's discipleship, a woman's discipleship, a prayer night, a worship night, Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, Bible study, there should be something going on with us lest we're dead and he could even resurrect that hallelujah so I have to daily guard my heart and catch those little foxes you know um in closing tonight I had a dream years ago I try to remember it I should have wrote it down I tell people that write your dream down and I didn't write it down so I'm gonna try to remember it I just remember that in my dream it was like snapshots of my day, um, starting from morning to evening. And in my dream, every scenario in my dream, I was angry. Not just angry. I almost like rage. First, it was something to do with my husband. I remember him being there, of course, right? The one closest to you. He did something to me and I got angry rage and then it was like that little camera went off and then it highlighted another part of my day and I was in the marketplace and I was trying to probably buy toilet paper I don't know and years this was years ago I'm just kidding and in my dream my cousin was in the market with me and I was gonna grab for something that I really needed on the shelf and she went and grabbed it and took it and I was in rage how dare she grab that she knew I needed it and then that camera went out. And then the, the, the next um, time frame in my dream, it was like I was at church. We were having church, and we actually had a guest speaker, and I don't know who the guest speaker was, so don't ask me. And I don't even think it was anybody I knew. And he was preaching, and I was in my seat, and I was like doing the Christian thing. I'm like, yeah, preach it. I'm good. You know, I, I got this. I'm worshiping. I'm praising. And I'm, and I'm, I'm exalting the Jesus and the preacher because it's such a good sermon. And then he calls for altar call. And people come up. And I did my duty as a pastor's wife. I got up and I started to pray for people. But the lady that came with him, his wife, the minister's wife, came up to me, tapped me on the shoulder and said, can I pray for you? And, and through, like I said, throughout my dream, it was a whole dream of me being so angry and filled with rage. And when she told me that, 
I started to cry in my dream. I said, yes, I need prayer. And she started to pray for me. And as I bowed my head, the words that I remember is she told me, people are watching you. And the next words that she told me was, be selfless. Be selfless. And I cried. I bawled. And I woke up. And I thought, wow, that was a Saturday night. I woke up from that dream and I thought, oh, my goodness, what was that about? And we go to church Sunday morning. This is real now. We're going to church Sunday morning. We're doing our thing. We're preparing for service. And I had a dear sister in the Lord that I love greatly come up to me that morning. And she says, can I tell you, I need to talk with you. And she's, she's upset, you can tell. And she said, Sister Rosie, I just have to tell you that two members, I I walked in on two members talking really bad about you. And I'm standing there with a smile, like I always do. And from the corner of my eye, I spot the member who she had pointed out. And immediately, I started to bubble. I started to get angry. How dare they? And boom, just like that, the Lord reminded me of my dream the night before. And I just about wanted to cry. And I told this sister my dream. I said, look, I had this dream. And this is what happened in my dream. And I told her everything. And I said, so I can't let this get into my heart. And she's crying now. She's like, oh, my gosh, I needed to hear that. That was for me. And I'm like, no, that was for me. And so we're crying together, trying to console one another. And I said, she's like, pray for me. And I said, absolutely. And I said, pray for me. And she said, absolutely. And that's how we left it. But can I tell you something? God didn't want me to have that in my heart. He warned me. The dream was a warning because honestly, when I woke up um, Sunday morning with that dream, I'm like, gosh, that was ugly. That was a part of me I don't ever want to see. Rage. That's not me. God, that's not who you've called me to be. And so that dream was a warning. And so (laughs) to be selfless. I don't even know why I shared it. I don't even know where I'm going. Hallelujah. Worship team, come up. (laughs) I hope that it touched somebody tonight. You know, God often warns us. The truth is, God often warns us because that check heart light will go on. And the thing is, is we can't ignore it because we think it's nothing big. We got to take care of it. You know, seriously, Families are under attack, you guys. Marriages are under attack. You thought you were the only marriage under attack? Marriages are under attack. You see it, you see it with uh, movie stars. Flip or flop. Okay, I mean, I don't even go there. No gossip. You ain't heard that from me. But anyways, it's out there, right? People are getting divorced. It's a, it's a hard time. It's a trying time. We're quarantined. We're locked up. This has never happened before. And now we have to learn to get along. Now we have to learn to be in each other's grills all day long. And let me tell you something. It's a hard thing. And we got to be in our word. And we got to be in prayer. And we got to lock ourselves in our prayer closet because that's the only way that you and I are going to make it. That's the only way that our marriages are going to make it, that our kids are going to make it through this difficult season, is we give all this stuff in our heart to God, and we don't wait another day. We get it right, because he didn't call us to live like that. He said, catch those foxes, because I don't want to ruin my ravishing love, the love that we have for one another, the closeness that we have. My bride, I'm calling you higher. I'm taking you deeper. But catch those foxes. Get them out of our garden. 
Tell them to go. They don't belong here. They're ruining what I planted in your garden. I know it's a hard message tonight. I'm sorry if it seems that way. But I believe it's a prophetic word because it's a new year. It's a new day. It's a new season. It's a new time. And we have to deal with that so that we can move on. Because tomorrow when we wake up, it's going to be a celebration. We're going to feel so light when we place all our cares at the feet of Jesus. We're going to feel so free. We're going to feel that joy rise back in our heart again. Why? Because he cares about the condition of our heart, church. He wants us to come and lay it before him. So will you do that tonight as they come and as they worship? We're going to say a couple of prayers tonight. First, I want to pray for, with every head bowed, every eye closed in reverence to God tonight. We're going to give the most important prayer tonight. The reason why we came and the reason why we are here. And that is to say that Jesus Christ loves you. He came so that you wouldn't have to be filled with all these little things. But so that you can be free and who the sun sets free is free indeed. So you can walk with joy. You can walk with freedom. You can walk and be that shining light that he's called you to be in the midst of this dark world. We are the church. So the first altar call tonight is if you've never given your heart and life to Jesus. Maybe here or maybe somebody watching tonight. You've never given your heart. You've heard about him, but you've never fully committed your life to Jesus. Can I tell you, it's the best decision that you'll ever make in your life. You're lost. You're broken. You're tired of the old. And tonight you say, I just want to be at the feet of Jesus. I want him to come into my heart. I want him to change me. I want him to fill me with his Holy Spirit. If that's you, you've never given your heart to Jesus, or maybe at one point you did, but because of all the craziness and everything that's going on in our day to day, maybe you've been far from him. And tonight you want to recommit to Jesus. You want to make a fresh start because like I said, it's a new year. It's a new day and it's a new season and tonight is the best night to get it right with Jesus if that's you tonight all we want you to do is please lift your hand as a sign of agreement that is me I want to give my heart and my life to Jesus thank you so much we see those hands you know the Bible says that one save there's a celebration in the heavens over one that comes to him tonight so tonight there's a celebration going on for his bride and for his church for his beloved people tonight I'm gonna have um, a few ushers tonight and uh, um, some ladies and just from a distance we're going to come and pray for these two souls right here anybody usher please come Um, team leader we're still social distancing but we're going to go ahead and just extend our hands and pray tonight but for those of you that are watching maybe you um, have lifted your hand maybe that's you tonight and maybe you just want to be led into a prayer to to follow Jesus if that's you come on let's just bow every head bow let's let's just repeat after me tonight say Lord Jesus I come to you today and I surrender my heart I thank you for dying on the cross for me for taking all my sins upon the cross so that I can live a life of abundance and joy, so that I can walk in freedom and liberty. I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. And I ask you to fill my heart 
with your love and your Holy Spirit. And I thank you tonight, Lord. Help me, lead me, direct my steps, and I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Just pray for them, would you? Josie, um, just pray for them from a distance. It's okay. Just from a distance, just pray for them tonight. Hallelujah. And also, and Ernie, just pray for him and um, just from a distance, praise the Lord. And tonight, we're going to do another altar call. Maybe tonight you're listening or you're here and you know that you know nobody has to pull at you. Nobody has to make you. Nobody has to elbow you. Nobody has to tug you or drag you. You know that that check heart light has been on. You know that there's some things that God has been trying to deal with you about only because he loves you so much. Only because he doesn't want you to live that way any longer. You know, all these things that these little foxes do, truthfully, they just make us miserable. And we lose our joy. But tonight, we're just going to be honest with God. And we're going to just come before him. We're going to lay every burden. I don't know, some part of this message might have just really, um, 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 went home with you one of these um something that was said maybe it really struck you maybe it really pierced your heart we're just gonna be real before the lord tonight because that's what he wants he wants us to be real we can't help anybody if we're putting on a facade because one day we're gonna explode and the real deal is gonna come out so we gotta deal with it now and i'm gonna pray for you that's you if you want to kneel if you want to stand if you just want to lift your hands you can go ahead and do that those of you watching you want to kneel right where you are father in the name of jesus we just love you tonight father we thank you that your grace your goodness god your mercy we want to be the best we that we can the best i want to be the best myself my that i can god I can't worry about this person or that person. Lord, I got to come right before you tonight. And Father, we just lay every burden down, God. We lay every care down, God. We give you our hearts tonight. We ask you to come in to search our hearts, oh God, to remove those things that don't belong, those hindrances, Father, from us growing, God, and from our relationship, Father. Lord, I pray that we let it go, that we release it, that we forgive those that have offended us, Lord, that we just lay it all at your feet, at your cross, God. And we thank you tonight, God, for healing to come. I believe there's people getting healed tonight. Healing in your mind, healing in your heart, healing in your soul tonight. Holy Spirit, come in. Come in, Lord, and heal every part of us tonight, Lord. Because we know that it's a new day, it's a new year, it's a new time, and now is the time for revival. So tomorrow we're going to wake up, Lord, as we shake it off, God. Now we're going to surrender it, and we're going to live for you, and we're going to walk in joy. We're going to walk in the fullness, in our authority, God, in rightful standing with you, taking our rightful position in you, Jesus. We thank you tonight, Lord. For what you've done what you're doing and what you're about to do in jesus mighty name and everybody said amen and amen hallelujah thank you for